Christy Overton Johnson. I want to welcome you to today's More Victorious Living. And of course, right when I try to start these videos, my dog Asher likes to pop in. Um, so our mascot Asher is here. There's no telling what you're going to see walking around. Um, that's just what happens when we do this in my home. But I like to come from my home. I like to bring you places, welcoming you into my space, but also um, take you on journey. So I hope you've enjoyed going to the Holy Land. I hope you've liked some of the videos from the beach. Um, it's warming up, so hopefully I can get you back out to the beach and the river and different places. I'm headed actually to Tennessee soon, so I'll have to get some um, from the Franklin, Tennessee area because, you know, years ago, um, like about a year or so ago, I was going to do a studio and the Lord just put on my heart that you have a lot of great productions on these videos. You have a lot of great content. My role is to take you places to speak directly to you um, as a friend and as a sister in Christ and to encourage you. But they're not to be these perfect things. It, it, you know what? If the dog wants to pop in, let you see my dog because may, you might be missing your dog. Um, some of you might be more of a cat people I, a person. I don't know. But anyway, uh, yeah, so we'll just pretend that the dog was licking your hands right there. Y'all, this dog is so special. And I, and I don't know that I mean that in the nicest way. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I should have prayed about taking this dog. But, oh, he just burped. Okay, let's get into the word. Okay. So, I don't even know how to recover from that one, but I'm not even going to start this over because I've started over seven times because this dog keeps interrupting me, and we're just going to keep going. We're going to keep studying, and what I wanted to do today, please stop, what I wanted to do today was talk about how we can discern when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, leading us to do something that, you know, might be a little strange, might be a little out there. Uh, you think about Noah being told, hey, Noah, you're going to build an ark. And God got really specific with him, told him exactly how big the ark was going to be, um, what kind of wood it should be made out of. And David, excuse me, Noah knew exactly that's what he was supposed to do, and he started moving forward. Well, we don't always get an angel or, you know, have the Lord right there in front of us saying, hey, Christy, I want you to go, I want you to go start a magazine called Victorious Living. And yeah, I want it to be uh, English and Spanish. I want it to be this many pages, this thick of a paper, this many words on each page. I want it to have this many feature stories and a cover story and this many stepping forwards and this many uh, transformed lives. And no, an angel did not appear before me and give me all that information. What happened is there was this knowing in my spirit, this, this gnawing at me. And so I want to talk about that a little bit. How do I, Christy, know when the Lord is speaking to me? I've already talked about He speaks through the Word. I've already talked about I know that everything He says in here is, is to me. And I need to line my life up with it. I know these are promises that He's made me. But how about if God's putting on my heart to start a ministry? If God's putting on my heart, like, should I marry this person? Should I date this person? Should I take this plea? Should I um, tell the truth here? Of course, because the word says tell the truth. But, you know, what all should I share? You know, that's when it doesn't always give you the specifics. What should you name this? What should you wear today? You know, like a lot of people I know pray. I mean, they're just waiting for the Lord to tell them everything. Well, I do want to tell you this. The Lord gives you common sense and the Lord gives you free will to choose and to make choices. But then there's going to be things that he's directing you to do that you do need to know. What would God have me do in this situation? What would God have me say in this situation? And you need to get your information from the Holy Spirit, not from all the people around you, because you're gonna get a lot of opinions. If I had run out and told all these people about God sending me to prison, God's got me starting a magazine, here's what I would have heard. Magazines don't aren't being done now. 
magazines are being replaced by digital. So don't do a magazine. Magazines are expensive. You can't be hearing from God. But I was hearing from God. God wanted me to do a magazine, and he didn't give me specifics. He didn't tell me where he was going to send it. I just knew I was supposed to start writing. I started writing. I did the work, because you're going to have to do the work. And then God took the work, and he sent it to the hands of the Department of Corrections, and that's how it got into prisons. I didn't do it. God did it. God used somebody else that had come across the magazine to go by the DOC and drop it off, the Department of Corrections, and drop it off in Tallahassee. I don't even know who this person was. That was the Holy Spirit directing and people listening along the way and things just get lined up. So let's say, let's talk about Christy right now because that's just got my experience. How do I know if God's putting something on my heart to do? Um, well, as I talked about, I think in our first episode, the more I came to know the Lord through his word, the more that I was praying, that I was asking God to speak to me, I started getting more impressions in my heart. I would feel like, oh, I would have an idea, or maybe I should go speak to that person, pray for that person, interact with that person. I'd be in line at Walmart or somewhere, and I would hear, like, go... Um, go approach that person. Go talk to that person. It, it's stuff usually that's way out of my comfort zone. and um, But it won't go away. It's like this nagging thing. I can remember one time I was on an airplane and I saw this man and the Lord kept telling me, he looked like a soldier, but the Lord kept telling me to go and to give him um, this bag that I had. And inside this bag was a Bible Inside this bag, um, it was a little drawstring bag that I had from another ministry event. There was also a dog tag in it. Um, there was some tracks in it that tell you how to come to know the Lord. And so I kept feeling like the Lord was telling me to give this man, to go approach this man. And I didn't. And man ends up, we're in an airport, being on my plane. And I saw him, the Lord's like, you're going to go speak to this man. You're going to give this man what I'm telling you to give him, and it wouldn't go away. And so finally I did it. And I know I don't even want to go into everything, but what happened after that is I know that the Lord, it was a setup. It, I remember giving someone one time a bracelet. The Lord was putting my heart, go give this person that bracelet. And when I did, it was inscribed unbeknownst to me, with their favorite verse, Psalms 91. And they were actually headed over to war. And it was a verse that their mother had prayed over them all the time. And it was a, it was a female, and she was going over to Afghanistan. Now, with this bracelet that I had given to her, um, because the Holy Spirit had told me to. How did I know that? It's because it kept coming up in my heart. It was pushing me a little bit out of my comfort zone. It was going to be something that um, my heart and my intentions were good. And so I knew that the Lord was setting those moments up. And it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but the more that I follow the umptions of my heart and the tuggings of my heart, the more I begun to realize, don't ignore them because I know it's God. And I know that I'm going to miss something if I don't heed the voice of God. So a lot of times it's, it's an impression in my heart. It's a, it's a desire like that's kind of wrestling in my spirit. Um, go do this. Go say that. And it's not me. I know it's not my flesh because my flesh would not want to go put me in a moment where I could be rejected. That's not Christy. <laughs> I don't like that where I might could have to get into a confrontation. I don't like confrontations. I don't like discussions um, where I don't know where the questions are going to go. Uh, that's why I've always enjoyed speaking because I can say what's on my heart and I ain't got to worry about an interruption. And, it, you know, those things. So when God's moving me out of my comfort zone like that, I just learn I got to go obey and God's doing something. And however they receive it, it just, it's that's not up to me. That It's not the 
does not depend on me and it's not my responsibility. My responsibility is heeding the voice of God. So it's the option. It's that tug of my spirit to go. It's something that won't go away. Like this, the magazine kept coming up in my heart, coming up in my heart. Do a magazine, tell people stories, tell people stories, write, do these things. And then I would have people come up and confirm it. And God used people to position me to start doing what he had been telling me to do. If that thing won't go away, y'all, it's most likely the Lord. Now, I get a lot of ideas. I have a lot of good ideas, but they're not all God ideas. And there's a big difference. I work with a life coach, and one thing that Dave has taught me, he says, you need an idea parking lot. I actually have what is called an idea parking lot. When I get an idea, I had to go park it, and then I got to pray over it. And I want to encourage you to do that. Maybe you got an idea over something. Go put it in the parking lot and pray over it. You see, I can have 10, 15, 20 ideas, good ideas a day. You can tell me something that you got going on in your life, and I can give you maybe some business you want to start or an organization you already have, and I can give you 10 or 15 ideas like that of things you could go do. I think of them, things that this ministry, Victorious Living, could go do in prisons, things we could do, start rehab homes, all these kind of things that maybe one day, because their ideas in my head, transition homes, they're there. But it's not the timing, and I know that because the Lord has told me that because I have parked a lot of these things in a parking lot. And what happens is the things that keep resurfacing, when I go back and write that idea, I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's been there five times. The Lord must be, must be drawing me to this. I pray. I go get godly counsel. Now, you cannot always count, count on the counsel. Um, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. I guarantee you Noah did not have a big circle of friends that was coming up side of him saying, you go, Noah. You heard from God. No, he had an inner circle of his sons, his wife, and he's out there doing the work. And I don't know how many people joined him. Most people probably mocked him because who all got in the boat with them at the end? <laughs> Nobody extra, just the fam, just the family. Noah had heard, but if he went out into the out into the crowd and was telling everybody, no, they weren't listening. They thought he was crazy. People have thought I was crazy. You know, there was this time where I'd been, many of you know I was a professional water skier. I had been retired for many years at this point, I think about four or five years, and um, or hadn't skied for four or five years, had officially retired, but I woke up in the night many times, you need to go ski again. You need to go ski in this tournament. It was the world championships. And it was like three, two and a half, three weeks away. I'm like, what? I haven't even skied in years. I woke up the next night with this idea, with this burn in my heart, you need to go ski at this tournament. I'm like, what? This is wrong. I told my husband. He says, you've lost your mind. You have not skied in years. What are you doing? And it would not go away. I would wake up in like cold sweats. I've got to go do this. So I made a couple calls. And see, at the time, I was still the world record holder. And if you're the world record holder, you have an automatic invite into pretty much any tournament you want to go to. It didn't matter that I hadn't skied. I didn't even know if I could get up on a ski. And so I called the team manager for the USA water ski team. I said, listen, this is what's coming up in my heart. And he says, well, actually, if you want to do this, today's the last day that I can register you because i got to close out registration. I was like, put me down. I started training. I had like less than two weeks to train. And I'm telling you, my body went into shock. It was like, what are you doing to me? But I trained with an intensity because I knew what I had heard. I knew that Christy Overton Johnson would not wake up and want to go put herself on a ski dock unprepared. I did not want to be trying to explain this to anybody. I couldn't. God told me to come ski here. That's going to sound stupid. 
I knew in my heart of hearts that God was calling me about back on the water. And I didn't know why. I tried to figure it out. I figured I'm going to go win. I'm going to go win this. I'm going to give God the glory. And I'm going to be like George Foreman who comes out of retirement at 50 years old and all of a sudden is this world champion. And that's what I thought was going to go down. That I was going to have a line of my own grills like George Foreman did. But y'all, it did not go down that way. I got there. I'm one of the first off the dock. People are wondering, why is she here? There were people on chats on the internet, bad talking me, laughing at me. What is she doing? Who does she think she is? Does she think she can really go out there and beat people now? She hasn't skied. She's not on the new equipment, blah, blah, blah. And I'm telling you, that stuff hurt. It hurt. And I went out there, I was one of the first ones off the dock, which I'm usually last off the dock because I was always top seed. I'm like first out because I didn't have a ranking. My ski is older than the people next to me. My ski was about 16 years old. And I think the person skiing after me from some country who really didn't ski a whole lot um, was there after me, scared to death because Christy Overton Johnson, the world record holder, is skiing right there beside her. And I go out there and ski, and I fall. And I'm like, Lord, how could you do this to me? I obeyed you. I thought I was coming out here to win. I was going to give you glory. And what God did is he showed me through that. He wasn't bringing me out to ski to win. He was bringing me out there to show me that my identity was still wrapped up in winning in what people thought of me. And I still have a lot of that in me. I don't want people not to like me. I don't want people to um, think poorly about me. And I don't like people talking about me. I don't like that someone might come on this video and think negatively about me. But I know God's called me to do this. And so going back to that water analogy of me going back and water skiing, People didn't understand it. People thought I was crazy. But I knew in my heart that God was calling me back to skiing. And it had nothing to do about anybody out there but me. God was teaching me, one, to enjoy the ride. He was showing me I had deep-rooted insecurity issues and worth issues and identity issues that I hadn't skied in so long I thought they were gone. I was telling everybody, oh, I'm not Christy the skier anymore. I'm a child of God. And God sent me back to the water to say, okay, you just balled your fist up at God and yelled at him over some ski buoys. Because he, I felt he had humiliated me in front of people. I felt he had let me down. And God showed me, Christy, you ain't near as righteous as you think. You're not near as founded and have your foundation on me as you think. Is still very much in people pleasing. So God spoke to my heart. Let's get back to the point of this. And he led me out to do something. God gives me ideas. I got a parking lot. God speaks through people. Like I, I had an idea to write a book called Hit It and Running the Course. The first one was Running the Course. And this idea kept coming up, but I didn't, who am I? I'm not a writer. I'm not an author. I am now, but I wasn't then. I'm a water skier. I'm not a publisher. I don't know anything about this. But then I had other people coming to me. Man, you should write a book about your life. You should do this. And it kept coming and it kept coming. And finally, I had a choice. Do what I knew I was supposed to be doing or not. So there might be some things that God has been bringing in your heart. Maybe you want to start a ministry. Write it down, put it in the prayer parking lot. The idea of parking lot, let it be a prayer parking lot and start praying over it. See if it keeps coming back. See if it's confirmed from other directions. All right, so I have a list here. These are some questions when I'm having an idea, when I feel led to do something, to start something, a zillion ideas, this is what I have to go to. I have to do a test I asked myself these questions, and I started this in 2013 when I wrote this down. Is what I'm planning to do, is what's on my heart to do, spirit-directed or Christy-directed? Is it human effort to bring about God's promises in my life? So I have to stop, and I have to pray, because 
I'm a doer. And there's a lot of things that might come up in my heart, and I'm just going to go do them whether I, I'm going to just go do it. <laughs> so is it something that the Spirit of God is directing me to do? How do I know that? i got to go back and see, does it line up with God's Word? Is it something that's going to bring fruit? What does the fruit of God bring? Galatians 5, let's look it up. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Galatians 5 says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit. 5.22. Galatians 5.22. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Is this going to be used by God? Is this going to bring peace in my life? Is this going to bring peace and in other people's life? Is what I'm starting to do going to help people? Am I going to be a light? Is it going to bring order or is it going to bring chaos? So these are things that I have to ask myself. Is this something that I'm doing just because I want to be known? Um, because I want to be liked? There are so many things recently that have come up in my heart that I'm like, I should go do so and so. Sure, God would have me go call this person, go visit this person, go buy this thing and do this thing. It's a good thing. But then once I pray about, the Lord will get a little deeper and say, why are you doing this thing? It's not spirit directed. It's Christy directed. Because you want to go do this, Christy, because at the end of the day, you want people to think good about you. You're calling this person because you don't want them to think you've forgotten them. And you want to make sure they're not out talking about you. And so that's Christy directed. And if I run around doing all the things that are Christy directed out of my flesh and my desire to be loved and liked and accepted, I will be all over the place. Because the Bible says you cannot serve God. You can't have two masters. You can't serve God in money. You can't serve God in people. And so I have to know is first and foremost, I got to stop and check my motives. I got to check and say, is what's in my heart to do? Now, this is like, I'm talking about a situation where something keeps coming up and you feel like you're supposed to go do it. Is it going to honor God? Is it something that's spirit directed? Is it something I've reasoned I should do? Like, I've maybe I should go do this. Think about Sarah and Abraham. They had a promise from God. Sarah reasoned in her heart, I've got to go make this happen. So I'm going to go get my concubine, Hagar, and I'm going to have her sleep with my husband so that I can have a baby. That is called human effort trying to bring about the promises of God. She reasoned in her mind. I don't want to be reasoning in my mind, using my flesh, using what I got. I'm going to use the Word of God, the Spirit of God, the wisdom of God, and the wisdom of the people, the godly people that I have in my life that are my go-tos. There's a handful. There's a handful of people that I will go to and share what God's on my heart because I know they're going to listen and they're going to pray through it with me. Am I doing it for the sake of doing that's a Christie problem. I don't know if that's a your problem. Sometimes I'm a doer, and I just feel like i got to be busy. So sometimes if there's quiet in my life, I think I must need to, i got to go do something. And that's Christie's effort. That's not spirit-directed, directed, that's Christie. Is it taking me away from what I know God's told me to do? So God has told me to go into all the world, the, especially the world of prisons, and to be a light to, to the, in the darkness to share the good news of Jesus Christ, to make disciples of nations. And he has specifically told me to do that in prison. Does that mean I don't go do it in other places? There are occasions where I'll go speak in churches, that I will go and um, speak at sports events and different things like that. I'll go on the internet and, and give a word of encouragement. But my whole focus, my majority of my focus Am I going to go start out and start a school for pe for kids? No. <laughs> I might go support a school for kids, but that's not my call. God has not told me to do that. And so I might have this idea, oh, it would be neat to have a preschool right down the road, but I'm not going to go do it <laughs> unless a lot of other things lined up because I know that God has called me to go to prison. 
God has called me to do the magazine. God has called me to teach the word through these tablets. God has called us to have a writing and a, a correspondence ministry. And there's other things that he's put on my heart to do, but now is not the time. Because, and so is it going to take me away from what I know God has told me to do? Will it just totally, like, I got to ask myself, is my husband in alignment with me on this? Is my ministry team in alignment with this idea? Because I can't go taking the team and my family on this wild goose chase. I've got to know it's from God. I've got to know it's Holy Spirit directed. I've got to know it's not a Christie idea. It's a God idea. Will it cause stress in my marriage? Will it cause stress in my life? Will it steal and zap away my joy and my peace? And will it take my health? There are some things that I've done where I've gotten so many things going and I lost my mental health. I lost my balance. I was hurting my marriage because I had Bible studies going on here. That's a good thing. I was going speaking over here. I was running into prison over there. I was having people at the home, having people live with us. Our world was chaotic because a lot of the good things that I was coming up with were not God directed for that season in my life. Is it leading me and others to freedom or is it, is it going to be burdensome? The Bible says that what God brings in your life, he brings order, not chaos. God is a God of order. It's going to be peace in it. It's going to be joy in it. It's not necessarily going to be easy, not necessarily going to be received by everybody, but as you're doing it, you're going to have this peace. Everything that I do in this ministry, it's not easy. But I love it because I know God has told me to do it. So I get energized through His Holy Spirit. I can't wait to go into prisons. I can't wait to come on and speak to you through these tablets because I know that I know that I know it's what God has called me to do. And when you get to that place, then you move forward with perseverance. You go and you do the hard things and you don't quit because you know that it's from God. And because I know that, I can have that strength and perseverance and move forward. But I gotta make sure that all these ideas throughout the day and the things that I could do and the way I could spend my time and my money that it lines up with what God would have me do. Do I enjoy it? Do I see fruit from it? You know, my, there's some things that I've had in my life that I had to finally cut loose because there wasn't fruit anymore. And God was saying, this is a necessary ending. You need to move from that. And so if you get in God's presence, I've already talked about in the last episode that God is a God who gives you his Holy Spirit that leads you into all truth. You pray about those ideas you're having. Now, in this episode, we're talking about things that are, like I said, are rising up in your spirit, ideas that you have. Next time, I want to come on and I want us to talk about trusting the Holy Spirit, that you're going to hear the Holy Spirit in moments where you don't have a lot of time to go pray. You don't have a lot of time to go sit and seek. You got to respond right there. And there's a lot of moments in the Bible where I see that happen. It says, Nehemiah prayed, then he answered. And so the Holy Spirit will speak to you in those moments too. And we're going to talk about that in our next episode. But before we close, I want to pray for you. Father God, I just thank you for the ideas, for the God ideas that you're giving us. Lord, I know there's so many people right now, they've got ministries in their heart. But Lord, there might be ways that you want them to do this ministry that they've not thought of. They're thinking they got to go out and do a nonprofit. But Lord, you might have them come under a church that they get planted in. It might be an idea that you have for a different season. It might be an idea that you have for them that they're to start right now in prison, in jail. They're to start acting on what you're telling them, to build the boat like you told Noah, even though it makes no sense to do it now. No one else has done it. Lord, you're calling them to do it. And if they've heard from you, if it's not going away, if it's lining up with the word, if it's going to produce good fruit for you, Lord, and they just know in their heart, we're given the strength to start. They don't want to miss this. They don't want to miss what you're doing. If it's something that they're trying to push, and make happen, may they stop, take their hands off, and say, God, if this is of you and you want it to move forward, make it known. And you will. You will, God, because you speak to us. I love you, Lord, and I thank you for putting on my heart to do the magazine, to come online and to speak 
words of encouragement to my brothers and to my sisters who are incarcerated. Lord, I love what I do, and I'm thankful that you spoke clearly. And Lord, all I had to do was say yes and start working, and you worked everything else out, and you will do that for them. You will do that for my brother and sister. And so, Father, they can trust you today. We lay it all at your feet, and we say thank you, God, for who you are and for what you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you, my friend. Listen, there's some slides at the end of this broadcast that are going to tell you how to get connected with us. Write to us. Write to us. We want to hear from you. We want to know what you're thinking. We want to know the questions that you have. We want to know your prayer requests that you have. We have a prayer wall that we're putting up in our new office. Pray for us. We just got a new office. And we have volunteers that are writing your prayers down, that are praying over them. So when people come in, they can see these requests on the wall. They can pray over them. They also see the humanity of people behind bars, that you are a real person, that you are a father, that you are a son, that you are a wife, that you are a mother, that you are a daughter, you're a husband. Whatever it is, the role that you have we want people to realize that there are humans sitting behind bars with real needs. And there is a God that loves them, God that loves you. And so send in those requests. Send in your questions because we want to talk about your questions on these broadcasts. We love you. And I hope you're watching our podcast, um, Victorious Living Podcast, Brooke Interviews, um, so many of our feature stories. You get to hear a little more about the stories that you're reading in our magazine. I want you to watch the Stepping Forwards with Sheridan Korea, and um, those are going to really help you process traumas, help you have victory in your life over um, mental illness and addiction. She's been there. She knows what she, you're going through, and she's got the Word of God in her, the Holy Spirit in her to guide you into that truth and to help you find that freedom as well, because where the Spirit of God is, there is freedom. Hey, and if your family needs support, have them call us. The number is going to be on the slides, 352-478-2098. Reach out to us at hope at vlmag.org. We want to write to you. We're working out a lot of things with that hope at vlmag.org. Um, a lot of things, uh, but when you email us, we get them. We might just have to write back to you. Pray for us. I want to humbly ask you to pray for us. We just did our budget, y'all. It's growing. It's growing. It's uh, that million-dollar range, and, and it's scary for me, but I know that I know that I know that I've heard from God to do what I'm doing, and I know that I know what His Word says, that He will supply all my needs. And whatever you've heard from Him, if He's told you to build an ark, you go build it. If he's told you to go minister this way or that or to sit and to pray with someone or to, to leave an affiliation and it just won't go away, like God will tell you what to do. He'll give you the strength to do it. Go do it. All right. I love you. Bless you. May the Lord keep you. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching our broadcast. Are you an incarcerated brother or sister who needs encouragement? Write to us at Victorious Living Correspondence, P.O. Box 2751, Greenville, North Carolina, 27836. Or email us at hope at vlmag.org. To view Victorious Living Magazine in its entirety, please have your chaplain contact us at 352-478-2098. Or email us through our website at vlmag.org. We are happy to provide our Victorious Living magazine free of charge in bulk with or without staples.